We're done with the OVA and back onto the main story. Episode, uh, not an 11, episode 12 we're doing. Right? Episode 12, wait, wait, wait. Go back, go back in the playlist. Episode 12. Here it is, the next start begins. Let's get it. Good morning, good afternoon, or Hello. good night, my fellow achievements. Today, I'm here to bring all of you once again another ReZero video. Let's go. This felt like the calm before the storm. That, that's yes, I can already tell we gonna fuck up next episode. Subaru is not being a good boy and keeping his promise. He is getting himself involved in business that he has no qualifications, no business attending to. And now, it looks kind of bad. It looks kind of bad, right? Like, Amelia said, don't enter. And we entered with Priscilla, an opponent faction during the royal selection so it's like it's it's looking pretty bad and she's already mad but surely it can't get any worse right surely exactly what this episode felt like because see last week's episode it was a happy moment happy ending it was pretty much letting us know all this difficult suffering that subaru has constantly gone through throughout the entire arc it finally meant something and he got that date with amelia yeah and in this episode we don't remember, remember episode 3, happy ending. After Reinhardt did his thing, and we thought everything was good, and we woke up in the mansion, and it was all happy, happy. <laughs> it's not happy, happy. That shit's there to get your guard down. Keep your guard up. We get to see a little bit of that date. And the, like I said, the calm before the storm, the slow setup before all shit hits the fan. Because yep. I don't know if it's just me, but I, when I was watching this episode, I was just thinking the entire time, oh god, he's gonna die, he's gonna die, he's gonna get stabbed, someone's gonna- I didn't- I don't really care when he dies. It's more like the actions he does that creates these conflicts and how cringe and stupid he looks to everyone and then us feeling the cringe. That's what I'm fucking worried about. He's gonna get killed. Someone is about to fucking die. Like, the entire episode, the entire time, from the start to the finish, until the final, like, second of the episode, I was thinking something bad was about to happen. And I think that is really brilliant when it comes to this series. And it's something I actually haven't talked about, and I want to kind of discuss that a little bit, which I think has been done rather properly when it comes to this series. See, ReZero... It's able to build suspense and tension without really even trying because of what it has done earlier. I guess because the regression mechanic is said you're expecting a death could happen because obviously a character death doesn't often happen in different shows because there's consequences. Not to say that there's no consequences here, but Subaru can regress and go back. So a death happening at any moment definitely is something we audience is primed for. You're on in the series because as we know it can be all happy-go-lucky one moment and then it can all turn mm. to shit in a matter of seconds because something happens that you just did not expect. Like you know what happened in the first episode of ReZero. So when you think about it like that this episode was a very perfect episode to just make us on edge where we're wondering what is about to happen because we see in this episode that Subaru, he's not really doing the smartest things throughout this episode. Like, he's being a I think that he is, like, sabotaging everything. Straight up. Like, and the saddest part is, he wants to be good. He wants to help. But that desire to help, which I don't even think is a selfless thing. I think it's the most selfish act of pride where he feels this need to prove himself over and over again. And show his value and worth to Amelia. This is causing him to be tunnel vision and get involved in shit that he shouldn't be doing. And now, next episode, like, he gonna do something even stupider. Like, this is going pretty bad. A lot of people have hinted that so far, Subaru has been decent. Yes, there's a lot of cringe moments. There's a lot of stupid moments. But we haven't really seen a rock bottom Subaru yet. And, oh boy, I feel like it's coming, man. A little bit stupid like his overall decisions to go to where you know the capital is yeah to force himself in into this meeting and find out more information about amelia and we know how he hitched a ride with one of the other candidates to become the next you know queen of the entire but that's so interesting how priscilla and subaru they're not necessarily getting along she's more like using him as a tool to kind of maybe inflict some pain on amelia because there's clearly something going on there Halfwit is obviously a derogatory term to, you know, uh, refer to Amelia, who's a half-elf. And Priscilla also said that everything is advantageous, like the unique skill, the chosen one in Tensura for the hero Masayuki. It's almost like, I'm not sure if this is her delusion or if this is a literal fucking divine protection or a blessing, where no matter what she does, everything works out. 
And a clear example of that is when Subaru literally fucking wait for taxi and then her dragon carriage immediately showed up. Now, is that just a random lucky moment for a little bit of a comedic relief? It could be. Or is this her divine protection or blessing at play where she was able to use this fucking monkey tool, Appa fucking holder, right? Appa holder and use it to her advantage against Amelia. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but there's something odd there. Higher capital. I mean, Subaru was doing some stupid things throughout the episode, and I feel like that's probably gonna- Not some, a lot of stupid things. Come back to bite him in the end. I mean, I could see next week where some of the decisions that Subaru made in this episode could cause maybe his death or someone else's death, or something very bad to happen that he can't really get out of. Even, like, the actions of Julius, which I don't think is creepy. I don't think he's trying to, like, get on Subaru's nerves. He's simply displaying his chivalrous knight, you know, uh, personality to Amelia. And then Subaru's lust and fucking envy and whatever just makes him get mad, right? Maybe there's a little bit of wrath there. And he's so rude to Julius. Straight up, I don't think Julius is bad. So he's already fucked that up with Julius, right? He was a bit rude to Al. But Al's willing to overlook it. Even Al literally saved Subaru's ass during the fucking meeting. He, Subaru was about to do something stupid. Al immediately caught that and then dis, uh, diffused the situation. But he was a bit rude there. Priscilla? Subaru, I think, is being used again as a tool to Priscilla right now. Emilia? We've broken a fucking promise with her. Rem is just glazing and enabling Subaru because Rem is now just... I wouldn't necessarily say mindless, but... She will do whatever. Uh, she, anything Subaru wants, I think that Rem is always going to be there from now on unconditionally because of what happened last arc. Is there anything else that he pissed off or fucked off? Uh, fucked off? I think that is pretty much it so far. One or the other is bound to happen because throughout this entire episode that begins this new arc, he did a lot of mistakes. Now, one thing, though, I need to point out is that Felt is back in the series. Yes, yep. our little thief girl that was in the first the arc chosen of one. ReZero the is fifth. back in this arc, which I'm very glad. I'm really glad to see her back because I really liked her character. I wanted more characterization and development for her, and I'm glad to see her back in this arc. The main question is, is exactly, is she really- Ramji should show up and steal Felt away, bro. Fuck this bullshit. Felt probably doesn't want to do this shit. Reinhardt's forcing this down mid. Where the fuck Ramji at, bro? The next candidate to be the queen of the kingdom? Or is this like just some form of ruse to maybe make a sphinx she is? I'm very curious about that. But I love Felt the way she reacts at the end of the episode. Because the way she's acting or reacting to the entire situation, she's like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, I I'm a thief girl. Yeah, and then there's also a funny moment in the movie Memory Snow, the OVA that happens between Arc 2 and 3, which is before this episode, where at the end, you can see Reinhard Van Astre's mansion and felt like running down, <laughs> running away from, uh, you know, Reinhard, while Reinhard literally has a fucking dress, the same dress that Felt wore, and he's like chasing her down saying, please wear this shit. Why the fuck am I in this, you know, clothing? It was just so funny seeing the way she was, you know, reacting in this situation. More importantly is, why is Reinhardt so determined or insistent on Felt being the Chosen One? Well, of course she is the Chosen One, but there's, there's also this, like, uh, a new prophecy has been engraved. The, the, the wording of the subtitles was very, very clear. It was a new prophecy, right, got engraved. Like, who created that? When? I'm not sure. But it's five dragon priestesses, so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, did the requirement before before, but recently it got added as five? I'm not sure. But I think Reinhardt's just excited because he finally found the last priestess potential candidate to make the covenant with the dragon. I'm not sure if a covenant is the same word as a pact with the dragon. I know that we talked about how a contract and a pact is different. A contract is something that you make with the spirit that we've seen so far. And it's just kind of these terms that we agree on and they help each other out. A pact is more, they're expecting something in return. The dragon is expecting a return on investment after the pact he made with the royal family. So whoever is, assumes the position of queen will have to bear that responsibility. But then a covenant, I wonder if interchangeable. Or maybe they're all fucking separate terminologies. But um, aside from that, maybe Reinhardt is just happy that, oh, finally, I found the last candidate. You know, the prophecy can continue because there is great political distress and turmoil right now because there is no ruler. And until we find the fifth candidate, nothing is going to change and we're going to be in this bad political affairs. That's why Reinhardt's excited to bring Felt. 
And I mean, if I was in that situation, I'd probably be thinking the same thing. I mean, look, if you were a thief girl going around stealing shit and like, you know, maybe a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, and then all of a sudden you're turned into someone that's like a, a pretty princess, you're like, what the fuck is going She's on She's very here? out of place. You think like you walked into a fairy tale or something. So, I mean, in a way, I'm happy for Felt. I'm very happy that she is now going to probably be living a better life. But I'm willing to bet that it's probably going to put some strain on her relationship with the old man. I can definitely see... Ramji, no! Reinhardt, fucking homebreaker, bro. He should, Ramji just show up and take Felt, man. How that might, you know, happen because of her now being with, you know, the capital. How she's, like, now a new candidate for the throne. So I can see where there's going to be some complications between that issue. Because she's connected with thieves and stuff like that. And she's, you know, a candidate for the throne. You can see where that could go bad. Now, my main question is, is why was Amelia trying to hide the entirety of of the secession to the throne or all these candidates like why was Amelia trying to hide it that's the biggest thing i don't un what do you mean hide it They're trying to hide the entirety of the secession to the throne or hide the succession to the throne from who who are we hiding this from or all these candidates like why hiding the succession throne from the candidates i'm confused here Amelia was hiding or well, she was trying to be discreet around priscilla with her hood on but aside from that i don't think she was intentionally going out to like hide the fact that she is a candidate to Krush or the purple hair girl. Did this happen? Why was Amelia trying to hide it? That's the biggest thing I don't understand throughout this episode. I mean, the only thing I can understand is maybe that Amelia doesn't want Subaru to know more about her past or something, or maybe Amelia just... But it's not even a secret that Amelia is a candidate for... I'm not really sure what he's talking about right now, but if it's the specific example of Amelia, like, hiding away from Priscilla, I think that's a pretty easy one. Priscilla's pretty fucking hostile to Amelia. He called her a halfwit. I don't think there's anything nice going on there. They might have passed. There's some tense, you know, friction going on. That's why Amelia hid and tried to not really make herself seen there in case that she could have gotten in trouble and Priscilla could have called her a fucking morselers in the back street. I'm not sure doesn't want you know i guess him to be met or meet any of the other candidates for the throne because he might be very rude or evil and i mean i'm willing to bet that one girl i think her name is uh priscilla, priscilla i'm just Body gonna call her Scylla for short i'm willing to bet that girl she probably has a very nasty side to her because the way of course she does <laughs> literally the first thing she said i think involved the word commoner like know your place commoner like she is the most rich pompous elitist girl that we've seen in re-zero so far She's so confident. She is so egotistical. But it seems like everything just works out for her. And again, I don't know if that's a blessing or a divine protection, but she's definitely one of the more interesting characters in ReZero so far. To the point that I think that she's a lot more interesting than Amelia. I do. I think that Amelia is a little bit too just... I don't know. No, Amelia is very interesting in terms of plot. What I'm trying to say is like maybe personality. Because she's just a nice girl, right? Rem's just a nice girl. Priscilla's a toxic bitch. <laughs> I kind of like that. Amelia's bro boring. I. That's her personality, though, right? She's a dainty, innocent, pure girl that is so nice, right? But that's kind of boring. I, I, need, I want some spice up in my life. And Priscilla just shows up out of nowhere and it's just immediately like, oh my god. The way Amelia was reacting in this episode, she was hiding behind Subaru, making mm. sure she didn't show her face. Most likely, judging by the way she was reacting, I think it could be only one thing and why she was hiding. We don't know anything about her, and you're proving my point that based off of episode 12's minimal interactions with Priscilla, one single episode was enough to sway my opinion of who I think is more interesting between Emily and Priscilla. You think that, like, <laughs> you got one over me just now? No, you're literally proving my point. Hiding. It's probably because maybe that girl bullies Amelia because, yes. you know, she is half, half elf. Wit. We already know this has been established. And Amelia. <laughs> Half wit because of the elf side, right? Because like an elf bad, Priscilla's like, oh, you fucking mudblood. Most likely, you know, suffers from a lot of racism at the capital because, you know, she's different yes. from a normal human. And that's bound to happen. That's how humans are. They're awful people. So I'm willing to bet that that's probably what's going on. And she probably didn't want, you know, Subaru to actually see that. And then him getting upset to jump in and probably protect mm. her. Yes. And I think this goes in turn with how she was apprehensive of going to the village for the date. Yeah, we saw the date episode in the fucking casino slots, right? Holy shit, that was scuffed. I tried my best, though. But I think that she was also apprehensive there because of her 
self-awareness with the discrimination and prejudice that comes with being a half-elf that looks like Satella. And I think that if Subaru knew about that, and if the kids were mean to her, maybe Subaru would fuck those kids up. In the same sense, you know, we see how Priscilla's treating. We know that, you know, a lot of people are not, you know, not chill with the whole half-elf vibe. So, yeah, I could totally see her hiding this so that Subaru doesn't just spurg out again. That might be the reason here. I'm willing to bet that might be the reason because You're onto of something, her being a half-elf. Now, if I it's agree. not that, there's something else going on here, which I, I don't know, but it's probably going to be rather dangerous for, you know, Subaru because we know he's going to suffer. Eh? The, the series constantly likes killing him. So, yeah, episode of... Honestly, at this point, I think he deserves to suffer. The way Subaru acted last episode is rubbing me off in the wrong way. Up until now, I've seen his flaws, but I also root for him and I'm cheering because I want him to succeed because he's trying so hard. And that's the part, right? The trying so hard part. Sometimes it just comes off in the most rude and obnoxious way. Like, again, the whole conversation with Julius was just so out of hand. He thought that Julius was literally stealing Amelia when all he was doing was doing a formal greeting as a knight and showing his chivalry. But Subaru, with this lust and envy and wrath, it's just like, and maybe a bit of pride too. It's just a combination of everything. He just lashes out on Julius when at the end of the day, like, he's not an enemy. He even, like, I think has some level of respect or a level of, I don't know, dignity to, you know, give Subaru a nod in the royal chambers as well. It's just that whole interaction pissed me off. Like, Julius was in the right there. And Subaru was just fucking annoying and cringe. And the whole Priscilla moment, he... <laughs> Got smashed against the wall by Priscilla. Remember that did happen. Now at the end of the interaction, when he threw like an oppa at her, that was a pretty cool moment, I guess. That was when he wasn't really being cringe. That's when it was like, oh, the Riz is actually working. In terms of the conversation with Wilhelm von Austria, who I assume is Reinhardt's grandfather, that was pretty good. He did do well in that interaction. And, you know, I think that Wilhelm actually has some sense of respect to Subaru. So that's actually pretty decent. But overall, it's just, he just spurging out. He is spurging out, and this is not the Subaru that I remember in episode 11 when he was saving everyone and everything was looking good. It feels like we just, honestly, did a reset, and now he's being stupid again. Zero. I mean, it did a good job. Like I said, it did a good job of setting up the atmosphere, the tone, the tension for the series, for the, this arc. I'm really looking forward to this. Yes, in terms of the world building and, like, opening this new stage for the Royal Selection arc, it's so good. It is so good, because like so far, what happened? Arc 1, we don't know shit about the world. Some important lore is dropped regarding Satella, right? And how we're in the Dragon Kingdom, but we don't know shit. And we're kind of confined in this little area and uh, the loot cellar. And Arc 2 is about the mansion at Roswell's place, and we get a little bit of the village, and we get to know a little bit more about the world. But then now it's just like the world is expanding. Now we're at the kingdom, there's like new fucking candidates, presumably from different regions as well. Like, I love the whole setup of episode 12. There's so much to talk about. This arc, because it's actually rather different from the previous arcs. I mean, the first arc is focused around, you know, just trying to get this insignia for Amelia. The second arc was in the middle of a mansion, mm -hmm. and this arc now, we're going into where, you know, politics and, and stuff are at. So I'm really interested in that. I, as you all know, I love politics and that when it comes to anime and manga. So seeing it in this series that we might get to see it, I'm excited. I'm very excited for that to see some content around that. I wonder if Chibi will mention Roswell in the last 20 seconds. Also getting to see, like, you know, the higher-up officials and what they're doing in this world. And also, there's potential for world-building because, you know, we're in this point to where we're amongst all these rich people that probably will talk about all sorts of different events in the world. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts. In the I think Roswell is very suspicious, especially because he made his intent clear that his goal is to make sure Amelia wins the throne so that he can kill the dragon. But the actions that he showed us last episode contradicted that how did he contradict he was completely fine with subaru fucking around from the beginning he vouched for subaru saying oh he can just show up and you know it's the capital and he can you know apologize and, and it's not, not apologize but say you know thank you to all the other people that helped out in arc one right that was kind of odd i was like oh roswell are you sure like, you know subaru's personality roswell is very aware of what kind of character subaru is we even see that in memory of snow where he pretty much psychoanalyzes subaru right and then, in the, the royal selection, it, it, the, the fucking hall, the main auditorium or wherever the fuck that is, when Subaru enters with Priscilla, Rosal sees that smirks. And after Priscilla pops off, Rosal immediately diffuses the situation by making himself the clown and says everything is fine. And he's 
perfectly content with Subaru being there instead of kicking him out. It just makes no sense how his goal is for Amelia to win, but right now, I just don't see how this is going to help Amelia to win. It doesn't just make Amelia look bad. I don't know what Roswell is cooking, but I do trust him to have a better idea of what the fuck he's doing behind the scenes. So maybe this is somehow a very counterintuitive way in for his goal to work, but very odd. It, many different moments where Roswell was giving sus looks, and I don't think it's me reaching. In the comments below, you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out. All right. There's that. Please go give Mr. Chibi a like. Shh. Go sub to his channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys on the next review.